I met a guy on the train, and I got off with him in Vienna. We're still there. I met somebody on my last night in Europe. Can you believe that? Well, she was literally a Botticelli angel. You were so sweet, I couldn't help it. And he's so cute. What are you reading? How about you? Um, look, I was thinking about going to the lounge car sometime soon. Would you like to come with me? Yeah. I'm American. You're American? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. No, okay. I'm just, uh, <laughs> I'm just traveling around. I've been riding the trains for the past two, three weeks. What? <laughs> no, it's, she's super smart. I like to feel his eyes on me when I look away. I wish I had met you earlier. You know, I really like talking to you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it was really nice talking to you. All right, I have an admittedly insane idea, but if I don't ask you this, it's just, uh, you know, it's gonna haunt me the rest of my life. What? You should get off the train with me here in Vienna and come check out the town. What? It'll be fun. And if I turn out to be some kind of psycho, you know, you just get on the next train. Let me get my bag. My name? Uh, it's Jesse. It's James, actually, but everybody always calls me Jesse. <laughs> I'm Celine. I mean, my parents are just these two people who didn't like each other very much, who uh, decided to get married and have a kid, and they try their best to be nice to me. <laughs> you know, my parents never really spoken of the possibility of my falling in love or getting married or having children. I always feel this pressure of being a strong and independent icon of womanhood and not making making look like my my whole life is revolving around some guy. Well, I kind of see love is this uh, escape for two people who don't know how to be alone, you know? Ah. Can I tell you a secret? Are you trying to say you want to kiss me? I feel like this is uh, some dream world we're in, you know? Yeah, it's so weird. So often in my life, I've been with people and shared beautiful moments like traveling or staying up all night and watching the sunrise. I wish I'd been with someone else. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm happy to be with you. You couldn't possibly know why a night like this is so important to my life right now. I don't think we should sleep together. You meet a French girl on the train, fuck her, and never see her again. And have this <laughs> great right, story. Right, I don't want to be a great story. Right. I don't want this. You don't want to see me again? <laughs> if somebody gave me the choice right now of to never see you again or to marry you, I would marry you. And maybe that's a lot of romantic bullshit, but people have gotten married for a lot less. Okay. I guess this is it now. Yeah. I have a great life. <laughs> I've done with everything you're gonna do. You all know, right, all right. Work Good luck hard. with school and all that. Okay. Maybe we should meet here in this, this summer. But I'm gonna be here. <laughs> okay, me too. All right. Bye. Goodbye. We all see the world through our own tiny keyhole, right? Well, I thought if I could write a book that could capture what it's like to, to really meet somebody. Were there ever a French young woman on a train you met and spent an evening with? Do you think they get back together in six months? I've been, I've been thinking about this. It's a good test, right? If you're a romantic or a cynic. Hi. Hello. <laughs> I, mean, I can't believe you're here. Well, I live here in Paris. It's funny because I read a, an article on your book and uh, it sounded vaguely familiar. Vaguely, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I have to ask you, um, did you show up in Vienna in December? Uh, did you? No, I couldn't, but did you? Oh. No. No, you were there, weren't you? Oh, no. Oh, that's terrible. Have you been hating me all this time? You have. No. So why didn't you put the six months later, uh, the French bitch didn't show up? No, but you know, I did. Like, I did. We can change our memory of the December 16th. It no longer has that sad ending of us never seeing each other again, right? right. Now I'm older and my problems are deeper, but I'm more equipped to handle them. Damn happy to be here. Me too. 
Well, I want to know about you. Tell me, what are you doing? You know, what are you up to? You were living in the U.S.? Oh, God, don't tell me that, Celine. What? No, it's just, I, I've been living in New York since 98. You know, we were there at the same time. Do I look any different? I'd have to see you naked. What? I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. It's amazing what perverts we've become in the past nine years. What I, my point was, you know, to truly communicate with people is very hard to do. There's so many things I want to do, and I end up doing not much. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds terrible. No, no, no. So you now be forever depressed no matter what great things happen in my life? Definitely. Great. So I read in that article that you're married with a kid. That's great. Yeah, he's he's um he's four. On me dit que nos vies ne valent pas grand chose. Elles passent en un instant comme fan les roses. Do you do you? Yes, cute. Oh shit! What? I left them in the car with the windows up. It was six months ago. Okay. No, I'm kidding. Each relationship, when it ends, really damages me. I never fully recover. You can never replace anyone because everyone is made of such beautiful, specific things. All right, now I know for sure. You want to know why I wrote that stupid book? Why? So that you might come to a reading in Paris and I can walk up to you and ask, where the fuck were you? <laughs> oh, God. Why weren't you there in Vienna? I wish you would have been. Our lives might have been so much different. Oh, God, why don't we exchange phone numbers and stuff? Why didn't we do that? I guess when you're young, I just believe there'll be many people with whom you connect with. Later in life, you realize it only happens a few times. So, what is it like to be married? You haven't talked much about that. What is she like? She's a great teacher, good mom. You're not that happy with your marriage, are you? My life is 24-7 bad. I mean, I'm really happy only when I'm on my own. Being alone, it's better than sitting next to a lover and feeling lonely. Yeah, I had sex less than ten times in the last four years. <laughs> what, what, what? Are you laughing at me? No. I was fine until I read your fucking book. It reminded me how genuinely romantic I was, how I had so much hope in things. And now it's like, I don't believe in anything that relates to love. I don't feel things for people anymore. In a way, I put all my romanticism into that one night and I was never able to feel all this again. Every single of my exes, then they're married. I think I'm one of those guys. You know, I want to kill them, but it's my fault. I know it's my fault because I never felt it was the right man. Never. All right, you know what? I'm just happy to see you, even if you've become an angry, manic, depressive activist. I still like you. I still enjoy being around you. I mean, the only happiness I get is when I'm out with my son. I'm so miserable in my love life, in my relationship. I always act as, like, you know, I'm detached, but I'm, I'm dying inside. You come here to Paris, all romantic and married, okay? Screw you. So, I want to try something. First love. I mean, I love it here. This place is amazing. So it's a Celine. We met about 18 years ago. We kind of sort of fell in love a little bit. And then we, love it. And then we lost <laughs> track of each other. I can't believe I'm 41. Yeah, me neither. You've gotten so old. <laughs> I mean, it's like, is this really my life? Like, is it happening right now? Yes. I know. <laughs> hey, can I ask you a question? If we were meeting for the first time to down a train, would you find me attractive? Of course. No, but really, right now, as I am, would you 
start talking to me? Would you ask me to get off the train with you? I did talk to you on a train, okay? I did that. It was the best thing I ever did. Really? Right? It seems like every story told about us is meant to be. And the fact oh. is, you would not pick me up on a train. You would not even notice me. A fat ass, we middle aged mom, losing a hair. Okay. <laughs> Alright, the real question would be if I did ask you to get off a train. But what would you get off with me? Well, of course not. I have people waiting for so. me. So if you're gonna spend another 56 more years together, yeah. what about me would you like to change? Is there any way that you could be happy in the US? You know, you could find a comparable job there. Comparable job? Yeah. Are you kidding? No. I, I, I think the problem is, is that you don't want me to have a more substantial job. I have had absolutely zero time for myself. I have 10,000 emails I have to answer that I didn't answer. No, wait, wait, and you think I don't? You didn't say anything. You didn't have to. Yeah, yeah, it's always my fault. I take care of myself and everything else. You pack your bag, I pack everything else. <laughs> you would never let me pack the girl's shit. The world is fucked by unemotional, rational men deciding shit. You're right, as always. Let's just not talk about it, okay? Women explore for eternity in the vast garden of sacrifice. <laughs> it must be a full-time job carrying that much feminine oppression. It is. You suffered so much growing up in middle-class Paris. I can't imagine. You're an asshole. He tells me that even though I have an offer for an amazing job, he wants me to throw it all away and move to Chicago. That's what I said. Yes, I said so I we can babysit every other weekend for his ex-wife. Do I ever ask you about the time you went to go visit your old boyfriend after his mother died? No. You want to know why? Because I know the way that your fucking French ass works. We didn't have the girls. All our crap. Would we even still be together? You now want to be spending this evening, I and mean, this, this is what you want to do tonight? Well, you started it. No, you are the one who will not shut up. I don't think I love you anymore. Uh, jump ahead. 10, 20 years, okay? And you're married. And only your marriage doesn't have that same energy that it used to have, you know? You start to blame your husband. You start to think about all those guys you've met in your life and what might have happened if you picked up with one of them. I don't talk to strangers. That's the thing, I'm not a stranger. No, 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 we've met, we've met before. Oh. Summer 94. That guy, you vaguely remember the sweet romantic one that you met in a train. That is me. That's you. You look like shit. <laughs> if you think I'm just some dog who's gonna keep coming back, then you're wrong. But if you want true love, uh, then this is it. This is real life. It's not perfect, but it's real. I am giving you my whole life, okay? I got nothing larger to give. I love you. <laughs>